How do we deal with our mountains? Some of us, they've listened. Next time. How do we deal with our mountains? And we said we will have testimonies, guys. Some in a very positive way, some in a very negative way about how do we deal with the mountains in our lives. We spoke last week about Moses and the, the, the amazing testimony that he has about being on the mountain with God face to face, as a friend speak to a friend, receiving a blueprint from heaven for the whole nation of God. Having this awesome, awesome, awesome time in the presence of God. And then the others, they saw the same mountain, but they only could see the smoke and the thunder and all of those stuff. So for all the rest, for the same mountain, they said, no, 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 no. Don't let God speak to us. Don't let God speak to us. Moses, you speak to God. And then you come and speak to us, what is he saying? But it was the same mountain. How do you interpret the mountains in your lives, my brother, my sister? You look, look at the smoke, you look at the thunder. Or can you see beyond so that you can gain, have this awesome, awesome, awesome time with your master on the mountain? The two different testimonies from the Israelites and from Moses. Total to different scenarios. I'm asking you tomorrow, one of you could have an experience like Moses on the mountain. And in the same circumstance, the person sitting next to you right now could have a hell of an experience and say, whoa, I don't know who is God. I don't know how to speak. Somebody must tell me what God is saying. I cannot hear him. I don't feel him. I don't experience him. Israel and Moses, same mountain, same God. What will you have tomorrow? My question today is, my, my prayer is that you will understand how to distinguish what mountain are you standing in front of. Because you know when we are negative or we are too negatively inclined, too pessimistic, etc etc we can stand in front of the mountain and every mountain in front of us we want to stand against it in the name of jesus christ and let it be removed out of my way into the sea but that's when i could be so task orientated i could be so in a certain mode but meanwhile it's a mountain where god has placed that mountain there not the devil because he wants you to come up to meet with him Call a mountain an opportunity. Call a mountain a platform. A platform for opportunity. So God gives you the platform for opportunity. The platform where you can come up into that place and say, God, it's all about you. It's, if I feel like it, if I understand what's happening around me and in me and with me, it doesn't matter. I love you. I honor you. And if create, you created that platform for me today to say that, here I am. Here I am, just to say that I love you and I honor you. Not that I say I love you so that I can receive something. But the essence of my being is that I can love you. I can worship you. I can say that you are my God. And to say that, that's life. That is not so that I can get something out of life. That is life. To love you, to say I love you to honor you, to look at what I feel around me or what I see around me and say, still I will choose to honor you. And that resonates, that voice is resounded in heaven. The people of God on earth, in spite of what they go through, they say, I love you, Lord. In heaven they cannot say that, on earth they can say that. In spite of, still I will. In spite of what I experience, still I will honor you. In spite of me not understanding who you are, still I love you, Lord. And that's the song from earth that no angel person in heaven forever can sing. That song. 
that in spite of what I feel, in spite of what I see, still I will love you, still I will honor you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. May that be your song on your mountain tomorrow, for the mountain that God gives you tomorrow. But you know, we can quickly talk about a few mountains, but first one mountain where it's all about worship. When you got, get up the mountain, yes, it's a place where we see Moses just in total worship, surrendering everything before the Lord when he received the mandate. But then we also see the mountain where Abram had to go and offer up Isaac. Then we also see a mountain where Jesus was taken by the devil on the mountain. And a proposition were made about worship. About worship. Abram had to choose between vision and worship. Why? Abram, there's a vision that nobody has received to be a father of the nations. And the first child you have, the first way that you can see how your vision can become a reality, come and kill it. Come after all these years of standing in faith, by faith, speaking, stand faithfully with the Lord, believing in His promises, and the moment when it became a reality, and you have Isaac, come and slaughter. Come and slaughter what you received from me. And he says, this is worship. What? Because he knows he's God. This is worship. This is what? It's all about him. So if I do it, I do it because it's all about him. And he's able to raise my child from the dead, even if it must. But I will worship. We will go out to worship. I will not go there to kill my son. I will not be a murderer of my son. I will go up there to worship. Are you with me? I will not go up there so that I can go and kill and slaughter my son and be called a murderer. I will go up there as a worshipper. Uh, it's some perspective that the man had. But for that in our lives, my brother, my sister, when you go up the mountain, your perspective, your perspective in why you are up there, so important. When the devil come to you and say, no, this is what God promised you. This is what God promised you. This, 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 this. Yeah, you can receive. You can receive all the promises that God has given you. And the devil reminds you of that. Like, like the devil came to Jesus and said, kingdoms of this world can become yours according to the word, eh? The kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our God in Christ Jesus. It is the reason why, Jesus, you came to earth. So for your calling, your calling can be fulfilled. You can receive your inheritance. You can receive according to you how you see the things. You can receive it all. As long as you focus a little bit more on me than on God, your Father. Worship. And the devil put it before Jesus. Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. For it is also written. Are you with me? Make sure that on that mountain, when the temptation is there, it is for you to sort out your heart. God will put a mountain tomorrow in front of you. The devil believes that you're going to fall, you're going to fall, you're going to fall, you're going to be deceived because you will stand on the promises of God, you will remember what God said to you, and you will stand on that, but your focus will not be God. So the devil has the faith for tomorrow. But on that same mountain, God believes that you will sort out your priorities on that mountain so that from that day, from that moment, on that mountain, you can go forth with what he has for you. When Jesus made that final decision, no, get behind me, Satan, this is what will happen. I will worship my God. From that place, he went back and he went into his ministry. That was it. He was baptized in the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, like a dove. Father, this is my beloved son. Jesus baptized, and they went for ministry? No. They went for 40 days in the desert. And when was the final release? When he said, it's all about worship, it's not about the vision. It's not, first of all, about the job. It's about worshiping you forever. And the job, in the context always of 
you are the center of everything. I do it because I love you. I do it because I worship you. And when that was set on that platform, phew, Jesus went for his ministry. My brother, my sister, may you be able to be that son, that daughter of God, that you can have a life, you can have a job, you can have a ministry, you can have a future, because you come from that place where you sorted it out with God, where you said it's about worshiping you, Lord. If I have all the success in my ministry, in my business, in whatever, and you are not in the center of that, we, I don't want it. That was the type of talk Jesus gave on that mountain. And with that type of talk, he came down and God changed the earth, changed the heavens, changed the nations. Changed our eternal destiny through His Son Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Some of the mountains being placed before you is to sort out your life so that you can sort out your life, yeah. so that you can sort out yourself with God. Yeah. And He's there. He's there. He's immediately, if you want to call upon His name, He will be there. The enemy is also there. And God has the faith that you will tell the enemy. You will, you will let him see who you are in Christ. But first of all, you need to see who you are in Christ. Who are you with God? Who are you with God? Who is God in you? Who, who's you? who are you in Him? Amen? Amen? You need to know that if you need to at all find any form of breakthrough upon breakthrough for your calling, for your destiny that you have for your life. I pray that for you in Jesus' name. Let it be so. Let it be so in Jesus' name. How do you deal with the mountains in your life? So this beautiful mountain where you're supposed to go up, you have this awesome, 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 excellent time with God. You come down, you come down with mandate, you come down with the blueprints for your life. That's what God has, but the enemy wants you just to see the negative and see there's a mountain in your way. You are frustrated, you are irritated. Just stand in the name of Jesus and cast that thing into the sea and you, but that is full spot, but the mountain does not move. And you are frustrated, but meanwhile, you are standing and throwing a tantrum at the mountain of the Lord where you're supposed to go up the mountain and not throwing a tantrum. Why is the mountain not being removed and thrown into the sea? <sighs> it only happens in my life, not in your life. <laughs> I'm saying, may the Holy Spirit help you to identify the mountains, to see the difference of what mountain is in front of you. It's a mountain that must be removed. It's a mountain so that you have the opportunity to practice your faith. God will put a mountain there and it's not even a big deal it's not a big issue but he's putting it there so long so that you can practice how to walk by faith how to speak by faith how to speak by faith to the mountain and he will put it there so that you can practice so God how I must practice my faith tomorrow show me it's okay I'm not too lazy to practice my faith to, to be able to walk by faith are you with me? Uh, we have a mountain, Mount Ararat. That is a mountain for what? For a new beginning. Yeah. It's a mountain for a new beginning tomorrow. You, it, it, you never knew it was a mountain. It was not like Noah knew, okay, we're going to go, and then we're going to go there uh, over the sea or the waters, and then it will go down, and we will stop, and it will be this specific mountain. And No, 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 no. You just realize, okay. I didn't expect this, but this is maybe the new beginning that God has for you. Yeah. Certain things that doesn't work out tomorrow, you feel frustrated because you felt this is your week. This is how your week will be. Now it's not like that. Because God organized a total new beginning for you. Tomorrow, one o'clock, you hear from Holy Spirit. God, what do you want me to do? What do you want to say to me, through me, in me? Help me to be fresh. Help me to be always open for the absolute new. Are you willing that God can come and surprise you? Not just surprise you with a nice present, but surprise you in how he wants to deal with you 
how he wants to work with you, for you, and how you must work for him. All of those dynamics, but it's just because, I want to say on the spur of the moment, you can just be there and realize, here's something new God is giving me. Here's something new God is giving me. And you're excited about it, and you ask, Holy Spirit, how must I do this? How must I do this new? God will help you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We find the mountain. Give me another mountain. Mount Zion. Mount Zion is about God's presence and where God dwells. The mountain of the Lord. Okay, we find in the New Testament, right at the end, we see the new city, Jerusalem, will come down from heaven on Mount Zion. On the mountain of the Lord, the city... The new city, Jerusalem, on the mountain of the Lord. What is it all about? Jerusalem is the habitation of peace. The place where peace dwells. Prince of peace, God himself. So it's the dwelling place of God, the city of God, Jerusalem. This new city, it's about heaven? No. It's more than heaven. It's about me and you. We are the new Jerusalem. And the perfect... Fulfilled plan of God, all the nations that had to come together to be called the Church of Christ. Church is the called out ones. Called out. Called out of all the nations. We call it the church to become the New Jerusalem, the home of God. Amen. Where? On a mountain, on a place, on a platform where God is always, always, always honored. Where he is always praised. He's never questioned. There's not a battle. There's not stress. There's no stress. There's no all these other things. It's just God is purely just 100%. He's honored. He's worthy. That's who he is. That's Mount Zion. That needs to be established in your heart. As an eternal platform for God's praises. So that when you come tomorrow... In a situation, you live from that place, Mount Zion. You come in a situation and the platform is established that I will honor God, doesn't matter what. I want to kill that guy, but I will not. God, God has a plan for his life, you know, and you find the emotion, and the one is not, not to be angry at the person anymore. That is not the opposite. The emotion of I want to kill you because of what you've done. The opposite of that is, I'm excited about what God is going to do for you. <laughs> so it's not just about dealing with the, uh, I have peace with that guy. I have peace, I've forgiven you. No. I'm excited that God has an excellent plan with that man. That's the opposite. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. There's joy. There's a joy. The heart of God is revealed on Mount Zion. The heart of God for the people. If you are in God's holiness, if you are where God is, you are in his heart for that people. So if God's heart for that man is, he feels this and this and this, I must be having the same heart that the Father has for that man. Are you with me? May God help you. May God help me that we will really believe. In that place we find Habakkuk mountain. Yes, even if I feel I'm in the valley, I will choose to stand on my watchtower. I will go above. I choose to say I will go above my circumstance. That's when you say I'm going to stand on my watchtower. You say, I will go above my circumstance and I will see what he is saying. I will not just hear what he is saying. I will see what he is saying. Hello? And then, when I see what he is saying, even though nothing changes, but if I can see what he is saying, and I can write down what he said, and nothing even changes, still, I will rejoice in the Lord. Yeah. I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be able to sing unto my master. Because he's the one that's giving me perspective, just like this. Because he makes my feet like Heinz, Heinz feet. Hein, Heinz feet. You know that, no? In Mark, my foot is with Divana. That the feet just go up, up the hill. 
You know, the, uh, you saw also the photo of the, the buck standing on the dam wall. That's not a swear wall. That's the water dam wall. And then the, they stand there. Hey? Nobody saw that. One or two saw that. Uh, that, uh, that on that slope. Die box down it all. He's just there. He's just, he just know how to do it. No fear of heights. And he just has this amazing, amazing, amazing skill to get up there and to get down. You have this amazing, 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 amazing skill from God, given from God, just to climb at that, up that mountain. And that you just have that perspective. You can just have the right perspective, looking down into your situation. Yeah. Just like this. But all in the context of joy. Joy. Still, you will worship Him. Still. All in the context of joy. So make sure your life is filled with joy. Not based on your circumstance. But based in spite of your circumstance. Based on God's emotion over you. As we know, joy of the Lord is your strength. It's His joy, not your joy. It's His emotion. Make sure... That you work with God's emotion over your life. Amen? Amen. But for that, my brother and sister, on the mountain, there you go. On the mountain. Maybe in, with all these teachings and the things that we did in the past, maybe make sure you have some time there at the crosses. Just, just for the sake of bringing yourself maybe in an environment to help you to uh, assimilate. To, to take it in and let it explode inside of you amen all right i challenge you go and do that go and do that okay so that's about um, the opportunity to honor him in spite of there's opportunities to honor him in spite of that's habakkuk god gives him tomorrow that opportunity you take the platform and say i'll, I'll praise you doesn't matter what that's habakkuk amen. amen that platform but in at the end of the day in everything the platform to sort out your heart that it will be about him and not about any other thing amen, amen. Yeah. any other mountain that we talked about first session transfiguration. mountain of transfiguration mountain of transfiguration a mountain where you just speak start be silent don't when you speak it's going to be a stupid idea there's sometimes a place where you must be with god where you must just be silent because when you speak, you're going to be stupid. What you say, not you are not going to be stupid. But. So it's just this amazing, amazing transfiguration of Christ on the mountain. And uh, let's get an idea. Peter, let's build three huts. <laughs> Very nice, but no thank you. It's not God's idea. Just, Peter, just enjoy. Just grasp. Just take in what you see. Sometimes on the mountain, God wants to you, show you something excellent about himself. Yeah. He wants to transform himself to you in a, in a way that you will see so much more of him than what you would naturally see in your walk. Yeah. But he wants to explain himself to you. Without you, you didn't ask for that. You didn't ask for that. You didn't ask that he will show himself in such a way to you. But he just wants to. He wants you to see that. They didn't ask, Jesus, can we see you in, in this way? And maybe with if Moses or Elijah or somebody like that can come and show up also. You know, please. No. But he just did it. You know, sometimes on the mountain, God will put a mountain there and he will call you up to, on that mountain because he just wants to be, do something special for you. He just wants to show you something special about himself. You know, that, you know, he's the son of God and I hear the father say so. I see the father, he's bragging about his son, saying, this is my beloved son, listen to him. And the father said, I must listen and I must obey Jesus Christ, my master. I heard that on the mount. I heard my father. Hello? Yeah. That was what was heard, eh? The father said, this is my son. You need to obey him. Leister now. May God help you. 
may help you really that we will have more and more that type of revelation to understand who is your who is our father and that even our father can say that is my daughter that is my son that is my daughter that is my son enjoy me when you look at them see my love see my peace see my faithfulness see my favor see my grace when you even look at their mistakes see how my grace is upon them so many things god would want to say to you if you are just open can god take you on a mountain and surprise you just give you this major surprise about what he wanted to do on that mountain that you never thought of he didn't ask for it he didn't expect it not at all and when you see what you didn't expect to see then just enjoy don't get an idea <laughs> let's build huts <laughs> are you with me sometimes we must just learn how to be and how not to get ideas Hey, hello. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Any other mountain? Caramel. 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 What happened on Carmel? Oh, that was one of the ones that we didn't speak about yet. Yeah. Okay. Elijah and the Baal prophets. And the amazing thing in the Old Testament, so many places on the, on the high places, on the mountains, where the people offered, they did worship, they offered all a lot of rubbish to all the gods, even offered up their own, slaughtered their own children. Yeah, how the, the heathen did it in that way. In the high places, you need to finally... Finally, make sure that you sort out who will you worship and who not. Yeah. It will be him and it will be him alone. Yeah. I will call unto him and him alone. You will not build altars anymore. No. But how? In prayer, in worship. That's like building an altar. There's a mountain and on the top of that mountain of your life, you put that altar there. I worship you, Lord. There's a mountain. On the top of that altar... It will be your worship. I pray, I honor, I worship you, I love you. And in this mountain in front of your life, at the top of every mountain that you face, at the top, at the top, there will be only one thing. God's honored. Yes. The name above all names. Yeah. He's the one. Nobody else. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He's the one. <laughs> What did we say when it went down? Oh. We talked about the haras. <laughs> okay. Well. <laughs> yeah. So what are we saying? What they say? My brother, my sister, may God help you. That you will know that you know. Psalm 129. No. 121. 121. I look to the hills. Aksalame uop na berge. Where will my help come from? My help comes from? The Lord my God. Okay, good. When you look to the mountains, you will know there's only one place where you will find your help from, and that is from God. Not like the heathen that will, that will uh, offer up even their children on the mountains. No. Not from those gods, no, but from God and God alone. That's where you will find your help. What do you do with your mountains? In that place, there's a clear voice. There's a clear voice. In your heart, there's a clear voice. We looked at this, um, you remember? 666? 666. Those who did who listen to that specific teaching, Praise the Lord. If you didn't, you are forgiven. Just go and on the home family group and go and listen to the teaching. Okay. Good. It is was an object list. What do you want to say? Yeah. 
that thing. Okay, and the 666 in the Bible was uh, Isaiah 66 verse 6 that says there's a noise out there in the city, there's a voice in the church, and there's the voice of God who is dealing with his enemies. The voice of God is dealing with his enemies. When God speaks, the enemies has nothing that they can do. So when the voice of God, when God speaks to you in a gentle way and says, you are my beloved child, in the same in the say, at the same moment, he's dealing with the enemy that's telling you, you are worth nothing. You are rubbish. Self-condemnation. Inferiority. And all the other rubbish. All that other demonic voices. He's dealing with those rubbish. When his voice, when he's speaking, his voice is changing you, beautifying you bringing deliverance, bringing freedom, but at the same time, that same voice is dealing with the enemy. When he opens his mouth, the enemy needs to flee. Are you with me? So when the Lord deals with your friends, the Lord deals with your friends, when he deals with your friends, when he tells you how precious you are, you must just know he's dealing with your enemies. Enemies are not impressed with what God is saying to you. May you enjoy and may you appreciate His voice. Appreciate His voice. For your flesh, it's one hell of a harass, one hell of a noise for your flesh. But there's a voice, and that's your voice that is precious, that's beautiful. God gave everything so that there could be a beautiful, beautiful voice of a son of God, a, a daughter of God, that will call out, cry out to him. And that voice is beautiful. That voice is clean. That voice is uh, yeah, clean. It's, it's not filthy. I can say like that. Because God touched your voice. When you became a child of God, you received a clear voice as a child. The voice of your spirit is perfect. Perfect. Your voice as a child of God is perfect. But you can put a lot of rubbish in your voice. And a lot of ha ha vocabulary. And you know the um, stem to one? Tone of voice that can, uh, that can portray the attitude. Or the tone of voice can say how much I love you, Lord, how much I respect you. And with your tone of voice, you can capture, you can capture the message of it's you and it's all about you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. My brother, my sister, you have a beautiful, awesome, beautiful, heavenly voice. Yeah. Washed by the blood of the Lamb. Clean. And God wants the worship coming from that voice. God wants the wor worship to come from that Amen. voice. Amen. Holy Spirit, testify in your spirit. Amen. Amen. That you are children of God. Romans 8. So the voice of the Holy Spirit and the voice of your spirit speaking together. When two can speak together, but there's such an amazing way that they speak. Amazing way, there's a, such a harmony in how they speak together. Are you with me? So in an amazing way, the voice of the Holy Spirit and the voice of your spirit wants to speak together. If you can allow God's voice and your voice, voice of your spirit, to speak together, where two or more agree. If the voice of your spirit and the voice of the Holy Spirit agree with the voice of God in the Word of God. Oh, come on. Mm -hmm. What can happen for you? What foundation can be laid for tomorrow? What difference can come into your life for tomorrow? Not just the voice of an opinion. Be careful. You check a voice to have authority in your life based on if you agree or not agree. Be careful. Based on if you feel and sense this is God or sense it's not God. Because if you just allow voices in your life Based on I can understand why and not. A lot of times what God wants to say, we don't understand why. <laughs> Many times we will not understand the logic. 
But now if only you allow that what you can understand, you control what voice will be heard, what voice will not be heard. So God's voice will many times not be heard because you will not always understand what he's saying. Allow him. Say, God, God, help me to hear your voice accurately. Help me to see there's a beautiful voice in here. It's my voice, the voice of my spirit. And you said that you will testify in my spirit. So in my spirit, that's pure, pure, that is new. Everything became new. My spirit is perfect. My spirit is pure. In that place of purity and beauty, you come, Holy Spirit, and you testify with your voice in that place of beauty that's inside here. Are you with me? You have that place. Live from that place. You gave your life to Christ. You live from that place. And you'll see how many things, so much more, will become beautiful and beautiful and beautiful. Amen? Amen. You with me? Yeah. I feel I need to end here. Um, any other mountain that you want to quickly mention? Ararat, we read that, that one. Golgotha, you can mention that one. Basically, place of the skull. Okay, not a mountain, mountain, but still, the bottom line, where, how can I say, you find the mountains where the final decisions were made. Golgotha was like one of those. Also the mountain of olives, where final, final words, and there Jesus. Just as you've seen them, who went from this mountain, so he will come down on that mountain. There are certain revelations, certain chapters that will end. God will end with you. If you understand the concept of mountains, God is creating a platform for you and Him to meet about a specific something. With a specific agenda, you will meet on certain platforms of circumstances, platforms of running into your day and don't know what is happening now. But there will always be a platform. For you and God to meet. We call that a mountain. There will always be a platform. God will always create a platform for you. To meet up with him. But sometimes it will cost you some effort. Sometimes it will cost you some effort. To get up to the mountain. And, but most of all. It will cost you the grace. And the insight to know. Is this a mountain that needs to be removed? Into the sea? Is this a mountain from Zechariah 4? Who are you, O mountain? Before me you will become, before Zerubbabel, before you, you will become a plain. You'll, jy sal gelijk word. Wees jy o grote berg voor Zerubbabel sal jy gelijk te word, sê Sagaria 4, 7. Jy sal gelijk te word. Now intimidate, who are you, you intimidation? What type of intimidation is this? This is like a Goliath. Who are you? You uncircumcised Philistine? What are you doing here? How do you get the guts to come and stand in front of us? Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. So yes, there will be those mountains. It must become a plain. Because God wants to show who he is. Yeah. So he put it there. He brought the whole setup of Goliath. He thought he's going to win, but he was caught for a sucker. And the intimidation was dealt. Are you with me? Yeah. So God will bring a mountain before you so that the fear of God will come upon you. Because when David was slain, uh, no, sorry, when Goliath was slain by David, the fear of God was on the people. Because they saw, this is just a little boy, man. He was just a little boy. And he bragged about his God. Yeah. He said, I come to you in the name of the Lord. You know, there was this little, this other lighty. Among the lighties that think they know a lot, but they actually don't know anything. Because they were not trained in anything. He slaughtered Goliath out. No, he said he came. He came in the name of the Lord. Oh, is that all he said? Yeah, he said Goliath had no covenant with God. And how dare he then come against us. And, and that we are the ones in covenant with God. And that he come in the name of the Lord. And then he killed Goliath. 
My husband, are you serious? <laughs> That's the story. May you be so passionately in love with His greatness. May you get such a major revelation about His greatness and His awesomeness. Hello? That when you come in front of a mountain and you see opportunity to brag about your God, about His greatness, knowing that His greatness is so, 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 so much more than this mountain, I see the mountain, but you just, did you see my God? I don't want you to see the mountain, I want you to see my God. Therefore, you will deal with the mountain in the right way that's in front of your life, that's in front of your situation, where that's taking you away according to you, from your, you away from your destiny, that you feel intimidated by the mountain, you feel maybe discouraged, you become negative, you feel it's too much mountains, too many mountains in your life. That you must conquer or that you must cast into the sea or that you must I pray that Holy Spirit will touch your eyes today as you go from here you will know what mountain what is the purpose for every mountain in your life and that you will just be so surprised so surprised at the mountains one of the biggest themes you can write these surprise Moses on the mountain <laughs> surprised very surprised. Even with the burning bush, very surprised. Definitely on Ararat, very surprised. What mountain? Abram, offer up your child. Very surprised. God speaking. There's the one that needs to be slaughtered. Take your son out, off, off from, the, from the altar. Surprise. Can you live with mountains? And with a God that wants to surprise you every time. Yeah. There's not a mountain without a surprise. Yeah. God help us in Jesus name. I pray for every man, every woman here Lord. Lord I pray that you will arrest them in their hearts. Arrest them in their focus. To understand that Lord. You want to surprise them. When you organize those mountains. You want to surprise them. To show your greatness, your love, your mercy. God, that you want to surprise them, each one of us, so that we can see the beauty that you've placed inside of us, Lord. Help us to hear your precious, precious voice, beautiful voice, as we yield from our spirit. Help us to live from our spirit, Lord, as we will be worshippers in spirit and truth. That from our spirit we will worship you. From our spirit we ask, yes, Lord, open the eyes of our hearts. And that is because we can see through our spirit. We trust you for that. We honor you for that. We thank you for that, Father, that you just come and do that. I pray that for every man and woman here, that they will have, they will have the capacity to see beyond the natural. Say so they will see what you are saying, Lord. They will choose to stand above their circumstance, like on a watchtower, so that they will go will go out with joy. Be led forth with peace, Lord. In Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, and thank you that you help these brothers and sisters, all of us, Lord, that we will understand how to deal with our mountains in the right way, that life, God, life can be so beautiful with you if we understand the opportunities that you are giving us. God, you are giving us opportunities, and you, you believe that we will deal with the mountain in the right way. The platforms of opportunities that you are giving us, Lord, through mountains. I pray that we will see all the godly opportunities that you are giving us, Lord. And that we will respond according to the faith of our Father. That you, Father, you have such a faith in us that we will make the right decisions. Here we are. Here we are to worship forever. For that is our life. That is eternal life. To know you. To love you. To adore you. To be arrested by your beauty. I pray that for every man, every woman in this place. Burn away everything that's not from you, Lord. All the issues and the other rubbish and the mountains that we create ourselves. For ourselves, Lord, to fall and to be crushed on. No. No, those fake mountains will disappear right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that every mountain of deception that the enemy wanted to come and put in front of every man and woman here. No, 
it will be crushed in Jesus name those fake mountains will fall in Jesus name in Jesus name and thank you father for breakthrough upon breakthrough beauty upon beauty glory upon glory in Jesus name so we pray as all say amen, amen. let it be so